The films of Stanley Kubrick contain many great examples of the creative use of music. The Vera Lynn climax of Dr. Strangelove, the waltzing space stations in 2001, the modernist score to The Shining. Barry Lyndon is no exception to this, its Oscar-winning soundtrack integral to the form of the movie. In preparing the soundtrack for Barry Lyndon, Kubrick engaged in a period of extensive research. In the summer of 1973, executive producer Jan Harlan contacted music publisher Deutsche Grammophon requesting a comprehensive selection of 17th and 18th century music. Regardless of style or orchestra size, their research embraced a broad range of Baroque and classical works. Contemporary composers were also considered, with names such as Nina Rota, Ennio Morricone and André Previn all thrown into the mix. Ultimately, however, Kubrick decided on a score drawn from music principally of the period in which the film is set. Like the introduction of a third-person narrator, Kubrick's use of music transforms the tone of the story. Sequences are imbued with pathos and pomp and reflect the changing fortunes of the film's eponymous hero. Wistful Irish folk music is replaced with the rigid formality of the military march, which in turn makes way for the stylized chamber music of the aristocracy. In addition to using period music to create poignant juxtapositions, Kubrick modifies several works to suit his dramatic purposes. He had previously explored the distortion of classical music in A Clockwork Orange, with Wendy Carlos's electronic versions of Purcell and Beethoven imbuing the melodies with a haunting futuristic quality. In Barry Lyndon, a different distortion is at work, best demonstrated by the various reworkings of Handel's Saraband. Emphatically opening and closing the film, radically altered versions of the piece are also used to support crucial narrative moments. Distorting its structure and length to perfectly fit particular scenes, the Saraband becomes Barry's leitmotif, journeying with him as he is guided by the hand of fate. Making striking use of works by Mozart, Vivaldi and Bach, Leonard Rosenman's score ekes out tension and drama throughout. This audiovisual rapport is highlighted in one of the film's most celebrated scenes, The Seduction of Lady Linden. No dialogue passes between Barry and Lady Linden as he woos her. Instead, the emotion of the scene is carried by the musical accompaniment. Arguably the most emotionally expressive music in the film, Schubert's piano trio represents an impossible ideal. Driven on by the music's insistent rhythm, Lady Linden succumbs to the romance of the situation. However, a sense of melancholy pervades as she unwittingly commits herself to a flawed ardour, unaware of Barry's duplicitous motive. The trio is heard again throughout the second half of the film and comes to represent the absence and disconnection between the couple. Initially a theme of union, it is ultimately recast to signify separation. When Barry is wounded and forced to abscond in the film's climax, the final use of the trio seals Barry's downfall. His ill-gotten fortune reduced to a measly annual allowance signed for by his weary, disillusioned wife. Fundamental to the tone of the film, the music of Barry Lyndon guides our understanding of the story. Shorthand for the social circles in which Barry finds himself, music also acts more poignantly to reveal more about Barry's character and motivations. Eclectic, powerful and highly influential, the featured works will be forever linked to the film, a tribute to Kubrick's timeless vision.